Sunday school class tomorrow morning. Amen. Be in the house of the Lord for Sunday school at 945. And, and then we'll, uh, amen, let's be praying for our bus routes. Let's be praying that the uh, that children just come out, pray for new riders, Hallelujah. pray for our bus workers, that God will show them, give them favor. Pray for our uh, children's church and teen church, and bus ministry and amen. Sunday school classes right. and the preaching of the word, amen, and the sanctuary, right? Right. Amen. So important. So important. Hallelujah. And uh, so we're looking forward to a wonderful day tomorrow. And uh, I just want you to know, there's there was a rumor out there that tonight the clock's changed. It's not true. It is not true. Ask Sister Radcliffe. She will tell you. Yeah. It is not true. All right. So. Hallelujah. We, we look forward to seeing you in the morning. All right. Come out and be in Sunday school. And may the Lord will help us. And praise Hallelujah. the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Isn't the Lord good? Yes, he is. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise Amen. God. I'll tell you, uh, we had a little bit of sample of the young people tonight, but we've got a good group of young people here tonight. I want them to come and sing for you. And uh, I know they're excited about that. So we want them to come. Yeah. Just Amen. Now and sing. Layla and Wesley, you guys know the song if you want to help us. I think y'all know it. Come on, we just join them all in, whoever wants to sing. Amen. Grab some microphones. Are these on or do you push the button? Okay. Shake the Taylor, you know it. You can help us get your girls. You can sing with us. Y'all know it. Anybody else that feels led to sing tonight, just jump on up. When the kids part sings, everybody comes running. So. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's hear it. Let's get another mic. Yeah. was 
you know, completely gone, but today there was some kidney function. So the Lord knows what he's doing. And, you know, I just feel like we just, let's just praise him. You know, the Lord knows Amen. what he's doing during this week. What a glorious service we had last night. And I don't know your needs, but uh, one of the nights I think Brother Gabe felt like the Lord healed him in the house. Yeah. So I don't know what your need is tonight, but I know this, that praise brings the presence of the Lord. Right. And so everybody in here knows this song. Let's just jump in and sing it together. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Step up. These won't get you a mile away. Oh, 
Praise God. Appreciate our young people, don't you? Amen. Praise God. There's some good ones, I'm telling you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Brother Jamin, be making your way to the up here to testify for us tonight, if you would. Appreciate Brother Jamin and Sister Allison, don't you? Amen. Appreciate all they do. Amen. For Bethel Chapel and for Sister Ruth and myself and the school. Amen. I appreciate them. Want to testify tonight? Wonderful to be in the house of the Lord, isn't it? Yes. Amen. Hasn't your heart been touched in revival? Amen. I know that there's been a lot going on, and I, it seems like every time in, during revival, uh, there's just different things that come on unexpected. But you know what? I believe we can press through that, and we can receive what the Lord has for us tonight. Amen. The Lord has something special for each and every one tonight. I really believe it. Amen. I believe that God. God has something for you. But the question is, are you going to receive what God has for you? Amen. And you know, it's kind of like it at Christmas time. Uh, there's presents under the tree uh, with different people's names on it. And in my family, there's a lot of presents because there's a lot of names, right? Amen. But, uh, but really, the question is not if there's a, a present for each individual that's there. The question is, are you going to unwrap it? Are you going to receive it? Right. Amen. I believe it's a lot like that tonight. God has something special for you. Amen. He knows what you're going through tonight. And God has something special he wants to give to you. But will you unwrap it? Amen. Will you receive it? Amen. Take what God has for you. Amen. When the altar service uh, comes tonight, I want to encourage you. Press in. Get what God has for you. God is has so much in store for us. I'm looking forward to what God has in this yes. church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. How many of you are going to get into the altar tonight? Amen. Praise, Amen. The Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now you say, well, I don't know if it's going to be directed to me. It, it is. It is. All right. Just, we'll just, let's just make it clear right now. That's for you tonight. All right. It's for you tonight. Amen. Glad to have visitors with us tonight. Appreciate you coming to Bethel, being with us. Brother and Sister Spurlock, come. Amen. Sing, preach. Amen. Whatever's on your heart tonight. Aren't they wonderful people? Amen. Wonderful people. And I have so much respect for Brother and Sister Spurlock and all that they do for the Lord and their work for the Lord. And so Amen. we're just honored to be able to have them with us tonight. Praise Amen. God. Praise God. Obey the Lord. I'm glad to be saved. How about you? Yes. Glad to feel the Holy Ghost of heaven in this house tonight. Right. Wonderful presence of the Lord. Enjoyed the worship service. And then these young folks singing, touch my heart. Amen. I'm glad for a generation that's still hungry for the truth and for an experience with God. Amen. That desire is going to go a long way. Because it gets the attention of heaven. Right. It gets the attention of God. Amen. When there's a desire, Lord, just use me. Do something with my life. I don't know what it is, but I just want you to, to just have your way. And, and heaven takes notice of that. And God is interested in folks that have that spirit. And I, I appreciate the young folks here. Appreciate this church, your pastor, and uh, just everything that's been done for us. Thank you. And uh, I appreciate the wonderful service we had last night, the way the Holy Ghost just swept through this place. And I believe he's going to help us again here in these altars tonight. Don't you? Amen. Let's pray in toward the altar here tonight. I believe the Lord wants to help us. Book of Acts chapter 11. Book of Acts chapter 11 and we'll begin reading in verse 11. And uh, here is after that the Holy Ghost has been poured out upon the Gentiles at Cornelius house and Peter is back in Jerusalem reporting this outpouring and, and uh, relaying the information to them. This first hand account of what took place. Well, I'd like to see the Holy Ghost poured out here on a Saturday night, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you like to see somebody carried out tonight? So under the influence of the Holy Ghost, they forgot about what day it is and what time it is and what tomorrow is. Oh, come on now. Amen. How long's it been? Come on. 
since we saw him fresh right. fall upon our heart. Right. Amen. Praise God. I'd like to see him fall in this place, wouldn't you? Acts 11 and verse 11, if you have it and you're able, won't you stand? And we'll read this together here tonight. Acts 11 and verse 11, and we'll read down through verse 16. Praise God. Amen. The Bible said, and behold, immediately, this is Peter speaking here. He said, immediately there were three men already come into the house where I was sent from Caesarea unto me. And the spirit bade me go with them, nothing doubting. Moreover, these six brethren accompanied me and we entered into the man's house. And he showed us how he had seen an angel in this house, which stood and said unto him, send men to Joppa and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter, who shall I'll tell thee words whereby thou and all thy house shall be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them. Hallelujah. As on us at the beginning. Hallelujah. Then remembered I the word of the Lord, how that he said, John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. I believe that's the will of the Lord, don't you? Amen. As I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell, fell on yeah. them. Uh, as on us yeah. in the beginning. Amen. I'd like to see him fall fresh in this place tonight. Would you lift your hands and ask God to do just that? Lord Jesus, I thank you for your wonderful spirit that's here tonight in the spirit of worship in this house. God, we want to create an atmosphere, Lord, that you could just fall in this place and touch every heart. God, let our hungry hearts be directed towards you in the remainder of this service, and let it be our utmost desire, a unified desire that you would fall in this place and fill our hearts and touch our lives in the precious name of Jesus, we ask it. And the church said, amen. amen. Thank you for standing for the reading of the word of the Lord here tonight. Praise God. Amen. The Holy Ghost fell. Right. We still use that terminology, don't we? Yeah. Amen. We, we, we get to talking about a service where hey, things got off of schedule. Yeah. We didn't go through our little routine. Right. Come on now. Come on. And uh, we get to telling somebody what happened in that service and we say, the Holy Ghost fell. Right. Isn't that right? Right. Amen. Or maybe it was it was not until the altar service after the preaching and, and after we had done everything that we, 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 we thought we could possibly do. And then somewhere in that altar, amen, the Holy Ghost fell. Right. It may be in your car driving down the road where it's just you and Jesus having prayer meeting and the Holy Ghost falls. Right. It may be in your prayer closet. It may be in the prayer room. Amen. But it really doesn't make any difference where the place or position is. Amen. But the, the, the most important thing is the knowing that he is desirous to fall upon his children. Amen. And I believe that, uh, you know, the, the, it's amazing to me that, you know, Peter is using these words here. And, and I can almost see Peter, you know, in my mind's eye, I can almost see Peter, Brother Brim, walking down memory lane. Yeah. yeah. As he's giving this account, amen, to the church and, and to, the, to the folks back at Jerusalem. And he says, hey, you know, just while I was speaking, just while I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell. And it took me back to that upper room experience where he fell on me. Hallelujah. Amen. Anybody like to be taken back tonight to when that, that moment in your life where the Holy Ghost fell on you for the first time? Anybody like to have their memory jog tonight and feel afresh and anew just like you felt at the beginning. Amen. Peter said he fell on them like he fell on us in the beginning. Now there had been a little persecution. There had been a, a little bit of time span that had taken place since that first falling in the upper room. And, and, and there had been a little maybe friction. Amen. Because we're just people. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. And, 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 and that's even what was going on here. They're like, we don't know what's going on with this, this outpouring on the Gentiles. We can't wrap our mind around that. We don't know if we like that or not. Isn't that right? Yeah. And Peter's trying to, you know, reason, hey, I'm just going to tell you, when he fell, it reminded me, hey man, of what this thing is really all about. It took me back, hey man, to when he fell on me. Oh, hallelujah. You know, I'd like to see the Lord doing 
this place tonight just fall afresh and anew. You see, sometimes we go through the hardships and the trials and our soul is persecuted. And if we're not careful, we'll forget what it's all about. And we'll forget why we started in the first place and what this thing really is. But if we could just see him fall afresh and anew, it would take us back to that first experience where we could be renewed and say, I remember now what it's all about. Yes. Praise God. Isn't that what he said? Hallelujah. Verse 15 said, as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them as on us at the beginning. Then remembered I the word of the Lord. How that he had said, John indeed baptized with water, but she shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Amen. All these things that have been clogging my mind and all the duties of the apostleship and all of the, the worrying and fretting about the persecution and all the resistance we've been facing. Amen. Kind of got my mind off the right motive of what I'm doing this for in the first place. Oh, I'd like to see the Holy Ghost fall. Amen where he just stirs our heart to where we really remember what this is really all about. It's more than just emotion. It's more than just a ritual. It's more than just, well, that's what we're told to do. But we're doing it because of the great love that we have for him. Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. How long's it been since he fell fresh in your life? Amen. Come on now. Yeah. How long's it been? Hallelujah. Since he fell fresh in your home. Hallelujah. Since he fell fresh in your marriage. Since he fell fresh in a personal way on your job. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. Come on. Amen. Praise God. And I'm not here. I'm not. I'm here to beat. Up, I'm not here to beat up on Peter or these apostles. Come on. But they were trying to figure all this out. Oh. This ain't really going how we thought it would go. Right, right. There's a lot of things didn't go how they thought it would go. <laughs> and Jesus pretty much told them point blank and it still kind of went over their heads very often. Tried to break it down and, and, and you know we're, we're really no different. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Sometimes we got things all figured out don't we? Right. And we got it all you know you know just mapped out in our mind the way the way that it's going to be and the way that, that it is and the way that that it can't be in the way that it can be but you know what happens when the Holy Ghost falls all of that melts away and we're just standing in his presence in awe and amazement and saying Lord any way you fix it it's all right with me I'm not here to be the judge I'm not here to be the one to condone or condemn I just want to say Lord if you're falling on others why don't you fall on me and stir my heart to remember what this is really all about. He said I remembered what Jesus told us boys. He told us that it is his will to baptize us with the Holy Ghost. Yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'd like to see him fall fresh tonight wouldn't you? Amen. Amen. I want to look at this word here yeah, in, in three different ways and then we'll be done. We'll, we'll come to this altar but this is just kind of the way this came to me. When we look at this word, fell. The Holy Ghost fell. Like I said, we still use that terminology in our Pentecostal churches. Holy Ghost fell. If you look in the Old Testament, to fall upon someone meant a different context, right? I mean, you look at those armies that set the battle in array. Right. And they got the swords right. and the staves and the spears and the bows and they put the battle in array. And the Bible very often, you King James Version Bible readers know that the Bible would say they, they went and fell on them. 
in the heat of the battle, they fell on them. Or maybe speaking of a certain man of war or a mighty man or even a youth and, and, and that they're trying to get up and, hey, get the sword and go out and, and do something. And, and, and the Bible says uh, that they went and arose to the occasion and they fell on them. Uh, amen. And in that, in that context, uh, to fall means to take control of uh, with power and authority over, to conquer, to win, uh, to consume. Uh, amen. So in this Old Testament, context uh, when the Holy Ghost falls uh, he falls on us uh, to conquer us uh, he falls on us uh, to pursue us uh, and to take authority uh, in our very life uh, he falls upon his church uh, he falls in our services uh, he falls in our prayer meetings uh, he falls in our personal prayer life uh, what's he doing it for uh, he wants to conquer you uh, he wants to con oh come on now he wants to convict and compel and conquer us to where he has complete control and authority in our life. Hallelujah. Where we are fully surrendered Hallelujah. and yielded unto him. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, I'd like to see him conquer tonight. Right. I'd like to see him fall. Right. Amen. Is there something in your life that he needs to fall on? How about a young person? How about a middle-aged person? How about it any person? I don't think we ever get beyond the place. Hey Amen. Where we, we, we don't need to let the Holy Ghost fall afresh and anew in our heart just to make sure that there's nothing standing in his way of complete authority in our life. Amen. Praise God. To, 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 to set the record straight. To, to, to make it known. Amen. When they would rise up and fall on those adversaries, everybody around would know who's the winner and who's the defeated one. Who's in control, who's in authority. Amen. And can I tell you, amen, the baptism of the Holy Ghost is very much relative in that context. Amen. When he falls, amen, why is the evidence, amen, speaking with other tongues uh, as the spirit gives the utterance uh, he takes complete control uh, of that most unruly member uh, he dominates it uh, oh come on now uh, he takes authority over it uh, when he falls in a life uh, he waves that flag uh, amen of, of evidence uh, that he's in control uh, that he has the authority that he has conquered uh, our will uh, our desires uh, our ambitions uh, our pride, our arrogance, our self-righteousness. Oh, yes. And when he falls in our life, he makes the evidence known that he is in control. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a, what a great matter, a little fire kindleth. Hallelujah. You look at the Bible, you look at James. Hallelujah. You see how important that tongue is? Right. What's it all about? What's been, hey, there's a lot of Pentecostal churches Hallelujah. that are voting out speaking in tongues. Come on. Come on. Whole denominations and organizations that are saying it's irrelevant. It doesn't matter anymore. Come on now. Right. I can't help but wonder if they just don't want him to have control. Come on. Come on. Because when he falls, he conquers. That's right. <laughs> he usurps authority over. Yeah, that's good. Oh, yes, he does. Right. And if we're saying, well, you know, I don't think I need to speak in tongues to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. We're telling him there's a place in our life that he can't control. Oh, hallelujah. I'm not trying to get on thin ice, but I believe that's Bible. Hallelujah. I believe that's roots of, of our doctrine as Pentecostal holiness people. Somebody say amen. 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 And, and, you know, I'm, I was thinking about this, and I was thinking about that story from history that's told. That Spanish commander, amen, who, who, who landed in Veracruz in 1519 A.D. And Cortez, he, he led those men onto those beaches, amen, and as they were 
marching into the, 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 the vegetation there in the forestry. Amen. All of a sudden, hey, somebody said, hey, wait. Look behind us. We've been ambushed. Our boats are on fire. Oh, come on now. I wasn't there. I'm using a little bit of imagination. Amen. But I smell smoke. What's going on? Look. Our, our 11 ships, they're on fire. We've been ambushed. What's happening? No. Cortez spoke out. He said, listen, there's no room for retreat. It's forward men. There's no turning back. It's victory or death. It's conquer or die. And I'm here to tell somebody tonight, you can't live half-hearted. You can't ride the fence. You can't give part and hold back part. If you're going to make it, if you're going to live in victory, he has to conquer it all. I said he has to fall on you and conquer every part of your existence. Yes, come on. You can have this, Lord, but you can't have that. Come on. You haven't been conquered. He hasn't fell on you like he wants to fall. Oh, I'd like to see him fall in this place. Hallelujah. Conquer every desire, every thought. Hallelujah. Come on. Bring every thought into the captivity and the obedience of Christ. Every will, every reaction, every motive, every response. Let it be mastered under the authority of God Almighty. Hallelujah. I got to hurry. I'm moving on here. To fall upon. Hey Amen. Let, let, let's look at another way that this word is used in another context in, in the book of Luke, in the parable that Jesus told in Luke 15. We see an unruly young man with a spirit of rebellion. He forsakes his father's house, takes what's coming to him, and heads to a far country. We know the story, don't we? Famine follows. Hardship comes. He spent all, and no man will give to him. He finds himself as low as he possibly could go. And the Spirit of the Lord quickens him. Isn't that just like God? Right. What a mighty God we serve. What a long-suffering suffering God we serve. What a patient and loving and merciful God. And so he comes to himself in the muck and mire of the pig pen. And he gets up and he starts his journey home. We know the story well. It's threadbare. And as he's coming down the path, amen, with the intention of saying, I am no more worthy to be called. All thy son. Amen. He's rehearsing this in his mind. He said, I'm going to tell him, make me one of the hired servants. I'm sorry, Father. Amen. And as he, his father sees him a great way off, the Bible said in verse 20 of Luke 15, he arose and came to his father. But when his father, but yeah, when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Now, this is a complete different context here. He didn't pull out a sword and say, here comes the rebel. I'm going to get him this time. He didn't sit there, amen, with a grudge and fall upon him in anger to kill him. But there was a display of forgiveness. It was a, oh, come on here. It was a sudden expression of love and mercy and grace and forgiveness when he ran and met him on the road and fell on him. Come on. Come on. Not only when the Holy Ghost falls you, does he fall to conquer every part of our existence, but he also falls to display the love and grace and mercy and forgiveness of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Isn't it amazing? Yeah. How there can be sinners and backsliders and saints of God. Those struggling and those on fire. And when the Holy Ghost falls, everybody's blessed. Everybody's touched exactly where they are in their walk of life. He comes right to where they are. Oh, I like to see the Holy Ghost fall in this place. Are you here tonight and you're in need of the grace of 
of God? Are you here tonight and you're in need of his mercy, of his forgiveness? Are you here tonight and you just need to know that he still loves you? You want to feel him wrap his arms around you? I'd like to see the Holy Ghost fall. Oh, yes. And reckon somebody, reconcile somebody back to the fold. I'd like to see the Holy Ghost fall and reunite a broken relationship. I'd like to see the Holy Ghost fall and do what only he can do. Mend the broken pieces of our sin-wrecked life. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You see, this is, this is personal for this family. There's a broken relationship here. I'm sure there was some hurt and some pain and some heartache. I'm sure they didn't just forget what he said when he left. I'm sure there was still some sore spots in that father's mind and in his heart. He was only human. I know. You know, it's an allegory here of God and his love but also if we could just get down to the humanity of these people that are in this parable they had emotions this is a broken severed relationship there's hurt feelings here you believe when the Holy Ghost falls he can heal broken relationships he can mend hurt feelings he can put pieces back together that we think is impossible. I've seen him do it. I've seen him do it. Have you seen him do it? I mean, we could stand and testify and tell, especially as, as preachers and pastors and people in the ministry, people that we know that we thought, man, it's just going to take God to put this home back together. It's going to take God to put this father and this, this, this son or this daughter back on speaking terms. But you just let them get in the old-fashioned presence of the Holy Ghost when he falls and he can do more in just a few moments than any therapist. Oh, come on. Any program, any amount of human effort could ever attempt to accomplish. I said we need the Holy Ghost to fall. We need reconciliation. Oh, yes. Amen. We need reunited in his presence and he can do that when he falls. If you're here tonight and you're suffering from a broken relationship, you need the Holy Ghost to fall. They may not even be here. You know, there may be only one side of that spectrum that's here tonight. Hey, I'm just going to tell you, I feel the Holy Ghost in this right here. The other party may not even be here tonight. But can I tell you, if you'll let the Holy Ghost fall on you, right. it'll begin the healing process. Yes. I believe, Brother Brim, the Holy Ghost fell on that father. He talked with God. He met with God before that boy ever darkened the door. Before he ever made his way back home, that father had already had that, that he had already been in the presence of God. And so forgiveness was there instead of hurt. And there was healing there instead of a grudge. And there was new mercy and a new beginning instead of dredging up old past hurts. I said we need to let the Holy Ghost fall so he can begin the healing in our broken relationships and reunite us with those that are so distant tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank Hallelujah. A reunion. A bringing together. That's what the Holy Ghost falling can mean tonight. I mean, you look at Peter. You know, it can be said that they were on the verge of a church split. Because we don't know if we want these Gentiles worshiping with us. We don't know if we want their kind coming to church. Come on. Come on. We don't know how to process this. We don't know how to handle this. If, they're, if you're going to bring them in, Peter, then we're going out. We're going to go down the road and start our own thing. There's going to be a separation here. We're pulling out of this. And he said, listen, I'll just tell you, when it all happened, when the Holy Ghost fell, hey man, something happened in my heart. And I realized these are human people too. These are souls that God 
God loves to. He loves them as much as he loves us. I feel the Holy Ghost tonight. And there was a healing. And there was a mending. And what could have been a split of the early church was mended and never even come into fruition because the Holy Ghost fell. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Holy Ghost fell. Peter remembered what it's really all about. I remember what Jesus said. I'm going back to what Jesus told us. Oh, hallelujah. I don't want to get far out of left field on that, but that's just the way I that's just the way it came to me in prayer. Very possible that that falling of the Holy Ghost stopped the first church split. Hallelujah. And there will always be church splits as long as there are people. <laughs> and there will always be broken relationships as long as there are people. There will always be divorce courts as long as there are people. But there will also always be healing as long as there is God. And there will always be mending as long as there is a outpouring of his presence. And there will always be a new beginning and a second chance. Woo! reuniting and a reconciling as long as his spirit is allowed to fall afresh and fall anew he can heal he can mend he can reunite he can reconcile he can put the pieces back together oh would you lift your hands and praise him right here hallelujah Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're getting ready to come to this altar. And I want to look at one more way that this word follow or fell is used here. Acts chapter 20. We see Paul preaching and he's he's long-winded, bless his heart. <laughs> And the people are listening to him, bless their hearts. <laughs> and there's a young person who gets weary with the long-winded preaching. Come on. And, you know, there's a lot of preaching there I'm not going to do. You know, there's many lights in the upper chamber, right? Yeah. This wasn't a place where he, he, he had to just fall asleep. Everybody else was making it. He could have made it. There were many lights in the upper chamber where they, were, where they were gathered together, and there sat in a window a certain young man named Eutychus being fallen into a deep sleep. And as Paul was long preaching, he sunk down with sleep and fell down from the third loft and was taken up dead. Now that's the wrong kind of fall. That's right. <laughs> We've been talking about the Holy Ghost falling, but what happens when somebody falls out? Yeah. Now, you know, there's a lot of, lot, there's, there's a lot of different ways we can look at that. People fall out of church. People fall out of love with God. People fall out of love with one another. They have fallen outs. Anybody had a fallen out with somebody before? <laughs> Come on. Am I the only human person in this place? Come on. We're not all going to agree. We're not all going to like the same thing. Sometimes we have a fallen out. What do you do when that happens? Come on. And here's a young man. He's half in and he's half out. He, he, he don't know whether he's coming or going, whether he's hot or cold. He's inconsistent because he's half in and half out. And boy, we, we, we understand that. And that's a different message. But uh, here he is and he falls to his, his demise. Uh, he falls out uh, and he's taken up dead. Yeah. Here's the death of a dream. Here's the death of potential. Right? Nothing breaks my heart than to see wasted potential. Come on. The death of a dream. Come on. The death of great potential. And hell is full of, de of, of dead dreams and wasted potential. Yes. 
because somebody couldn't keep their eyes open because somebody couldn't pay attention to what God was saying because somebody couldn't take advantage of all the light that was in there come on now because somebody had the wrong seat that was half in and half out and, and, and there was a falling out and there was, there was a frustration and somewhere along the line there was a death of something inside of them hallelujah hallelujah I just felt like there might be somebody here tonight. Something died inside of you. Hallelujah. Inside of your heart. Hallelujah. There's something oh, about your experience that has experienced Hallelujah. death. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the potential that could be is no longer. Hallelujah. And the life and the joy and the zeal that used to be there is no longer there. His eyelids are closed. His skin's getting cold. The zeal that he once had, the life that once was there, has been snuffed out because of a falling out. Come on. So what happens here? We have the wrong context of the word fell. He fell out. So Paul runs down. Right. Paul went down and fell on him. Did he pull the sword out? <laughs> We're going Old Testament on this guy. We're going to fall on him. Come on now. Hallelujah. No. Hey Amen. There was there was a there was a, a, a you know something within the heart of Paul. Uh, you know he didn't even break his sentence. I don't think uh, when he, he knew what happened. Uh, hey Amen. He headed for the door uh, and he went after him. Uh, I said he went after him uh, and he went right to where he was uh, and he fell on him uh, and embracing him said, "Trouble not yourselves, for his life is in him." Uh, when he therefore was come up again, uh, he had broken bread and eaten and talked a long while and even till daybreak so he departed and they brought the young man alive and were not a little comforted I'm here to tell somebody tonight that dream that has died in your heart it may be a backslidden son it may be a wayward daughter and all you can think about is the wasted potential and you're grieving over that empty seat around the father's table but I want to tell you tonight the the Holy Ghost can fall and he can fall through you and he can fall through you he can use you to go out there and get him I said he can use you to go and pursue that which has been lost come on hallelujah when he falls he can bring resurrection he can restore that which has died. Yes. Oh, do it, Lord. Hallelujah. Restoration. Giving new life to. Amen. Paul went down and fell on Eutychus to fall upon the press upon to bring life back to. He can bring restoration to a backslider. He can restore the spiritual dream that died within your heart. The disappointment that rocks your world. Come on now. Whatever the scenario or situation may be, all that I can come up with tonight is we just need the Holy Ghost to fall afresh and anew. It doesn't matter where you're at, what you're facing, what you've been through, what you're going through right now. I'm here to submit to you tonight that if we could see a fresh falling of the Holy Ghost in this place, everything would look so much better. Our outlook would be better. Our experience would be better if we could just let the Holy Ghost fall in this place. Hallelujah. Would you stand to your feet and lift your hands and ask God to fall in this place? Sweetheart, would you come to the piano? It may be a wayward loved one. It may be a failure in your own life that you have decided is your finality. The Holy Ghost can bring restoration. 
Holy Ghost can fall. It may be something in your life that you cannot get over. He can fall and conquer that. It may be a wound that seemed like it never will heal. He can fall and bring healing. How many believe he can fall in this place right here on a Saturday night? I believe it. Come on, let's create an atmosphere. Oh, let's create an atmosphere of worship right here before we come to these altars. Come on, let's begin to call on the name of the Lord. Let's begin to ask him to pour out his spirit in this altar service here tonight. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we cry out to you to pour out of your spirit in this place. Bring healing. Bring deliverance. Bring victory. Bring completeness. Oh, God. Bring restoration. Bring restore. Oh, yes, restore that which has died. Resurrect. Bring new life. Bring a new beginning. Do only what you can do. Put the pieces back together. Fall in this place like only you can do, Lord. He da 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 bohosa ta da da mahakasa ta da. Ah, come on, let's worship him here a moment. He da 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 bohosa ta ka ta da 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 mahasa. He da 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 la bohosa da 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 bohosa. He wants to see how hungry we are. Oh, I believe he's ready. He's always ready to pour out his spirit. He's always ready. He's always on the giving side. He's always on the asking side. He's always on the outpouring side. He's ready. How hungry are you? How much do you desire? How much are you ready to worship him around this altar and pursue an outpouring of the Holy Ghost? Come on, this altar's open. How about it? Could we come, lift our hands, and begin to worship him? Oh, could we come and stand in his presence and ask him to fall afresh and anew on us? Give me a renewing, Lord. Give me a reviving, Lord. Oh, God. I need a visitation of your spirit tonight. Fall afresh and anew on me, God. If you need, if you've not been baptized with the Holy Ghost, you can be baptized tonight. You can walk out of this place with newfound power and strength for having allowed him to fall on you and take control of every part of your heart, every part of your soul. Come on, let's worship him. Let's let him fall. Forget about what's going on. Forget about what's going on after church. Forget about what night it is. Forget about what tomorrow is. Let's get lost in the presence of the sweet Holy Ghost here. Let's get lost in his presence. Hallelujah. Woo!
Jesus. Let it rain, let it rain, let it rain. Let it rain, let it rain, let it rain. On the pastors and the teachers, on the youth group and all the preachers. Let it In our choir and kids' churches, let it rain, 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 let it rain. In our prayer meeting, in our worship, in our choir and kids' churches, let it rain, 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 let it rain on our elders. And our deacons on the strong ones and the weak ones. Let it rain, let it rain, let it rain. Let it rain, let it rain, let it rain. On the elders and the deacons, on the strong ones and the weak ones. Let it rain, let it rain. What we have is not working. What we're doing isn't changing anything. What we have is not working. What we're doing isn't changing anything. We gotta have your anointing. If we do, then it changes everything. Gotta have your anointing. If we do, then it changes everything we gotta have your anointing if we do then it changes everything gotta have your anointing your anointing oh let it rain 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 worship in our choir kids churches let it rain 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 in our prayer meetings in our worship in our choir and kids churches let it rain let it rain We need, we need an awakening, God. Let it rain, let it rain, let it rain. 
let it rain, 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 oh, let it rain. We gotta have your anointing if we do. Changes everything. everything. Gotta have Got your anointing. anointing. If we do, oh, it changes everything. everything. We gotta have your anointing. If we do, then it changes everything. Gotta have your anointing. Your anointing. Open the floodgates of heaven let it rain let it rain, oh. let it rain. open the blood gates of heaven oh we need the rain let it rain oh I need you Lord I need you Lord, I need you Lord. Let it rain. Let it rain. Let it rain. Oh, I need you Lord. I need you Lord. I need you Lord. Let it rain. Let it rain. Let it rain. Let your glory flow sweep over my soul let it rain oh let it rain let your glory flow and sweep over my soul let it rain let it On the strong ones and the weak ones, let it rain, 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 let it rain. On the pastors and the teachers, on the youth group and all the preachers, let it rain, 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 let it rain. In our prayer meetings. In our worship, Holy in our choir, choir, and kids' churches, let it rain, 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 let it rain. Open the floodgates of heaven. can remember what it was all about when I started. Take me back to the beginning, Lord. What I got in this for in the first place. Fall afresh. Fall anew, Lord. Woo! We gotta have your anointing if we do changes everything gotta have your anointing if we do oh it changes everything we gotta have your anointing if we do then it changes everything gotta have your anointing your anointing we need an awakening let it rain we need an awakening let it Sweet new Lord, let it rain. Gotta have your anointing.
waiting if we do oh it changes everything gotta have your anointing if we do and it changes everything we gotta have your anointing if we do lord it changes everything gotta have your anointing your anointing let your glory flow sweep over my soul with the rain oh let it rain let your glory flow sweep over my soul let it rain let it rain let it Slip your hands up in the air and tell him, I need you, Lord. Oh, I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. Let it rain. Oh, let it rain. 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 and the teachers on the youth group and all the preachers let it rain 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 on the elders and the deacons on the strong ones and all the weak ones let it rain let it rain let it rain In our worship, in our choir, in our kids' churches, let it rain, 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 let it rain. In our prayer meetings, in our worship, in the choir, in kids' churches, let it rain, let it rain, let it rain. Your glory flow, Let your glory sweep flow. over my soul. Let it rain. Let it rain. Let it rain. Let your glory flow, sweep over my soul. Let it rain. Let it Changing anything what we have is not working. 
What we're doing isn't changing anything we gotta have. Your anointing, if we do, oh, it changes everything we gotta have. Your anointing, your anointing.
your grace. Oh, I love worshiping you. I love being in your oh, presence. Oh, yes, I do. I love living in your oh, mercy. living in your mercy. I love basking in your grace. Oh, I love worshiping, worshiping you. Ha! 
worshiping you. you made when you walked alone in the garden and the cool of the day you don't have to come looking for me oh, no. I'm already here I'm right here Lord. I love I yes, love, I love. Oh, I love worshiping you, you. Oh, I love being in your presence, presence.
same old thing Tradition in your holy name I'm tired of man-made worship I'm tired I'm tired of songs without no praise And I'm tired of worshiping out of place I'm tired of religions for my the Lord. Wow, Lord, I would love for the Holy Ghost to fall on us. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Wonderful preaching tonight. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Do you, are you hungry for the Holy Ghost? Amen. Very hungry. Amen. Praise God. Lord, we love you tonight. We thank you for the move of the Spirit. Thank you for what you're doing in our heart, what you're doing in this altar, Lord Jesus. God, I thank you, Lord, for those that you're touching and lives that you're helping tonight. God, we ask you, Lord, go with us. Keep us, Lord. Watch over us. Bless the Spurlock family, Lord. God, bless them for their help to us and what they mean to this church, Lord, we pray. Be with us in our service tomorrow. Watch over our buses, Lord, and we'll give you the praise. Amen. Amen. Lord, bless you tonight. Amen. Be careful those still praying, all right?